Hey everybody, this is a video uh, on a, a aspect of Filipino martial arts called Dumog. It's the wrestling aspects, the close range aspects. It's a little different than, you know, American wrestling or sport wrestling because it acknowledges elbows, headbutt, and it's it's a form of martial arts that is amazing for street fighting because what it'll allow you to do is not get knocked out, which once again is the key to fighting, is not getting knocked out. You may get a few scratches, you may get bumped in like with a couple punches, but knowing Dumog will protect you from a knockout. Now, the, the whole point of Dumog is different clinch positions, different ways to control. We're going to acknowledge the head clinch today, how to do it properly and ways to get into it, and uh, if we have time, a few follow-ups of what you can do from there. So, the clinch itself is not around the lower neck, which a lot of people do. First of all, I never cross my fingers. I keep my hands like this, and I don't put my my thumbs interlock either. It's just a cup like that. Now I don't put it on his lower neck. If you want to turn to face the camera, look up to his back. Right? So it's not here. I come up to the top of his neck and I pull down. The reason is because here, hold me. I can hang. I can literally hang here. I won't get his head down. He, he has pretty good, pretty good strength here. The second I come to the crown of his head and I turn it slightly sideways and down, look how little. Do it as strong as you can. Look how little energy it's going to take. And he comes down to me. It's really good against bigger people because when he's bigger, I want to pull him to my level. He's at my level now. So once again, not around the base of the neck. Come to the crown of the head. These muscles aren't supported by this part of the neck, so it's very easy to separate them and pull them down. Okay, so right here. And I don't want to. I don't want to be head to head with him. Like you've seen a lot of MMA fights where they're they're here. I want to make sure I can pull him down and put him under my chin lower than me, okay? I can rest my head on his head so that I'm right on top of him. And I tighten my elbows so they squeeze around his neck. So I want him here. And I want to make sure that this part of my arm, if they're up, come into me, he can grab me. If they're down, I can keep him away with this part of my arm. Okay, now we're going to look at a few ways to get into it. So just put your hands up. The main basic way to learn it is like you're praying. So as his hands are up, I'm putting them close together. They don't need to be touching. It's just a way to learn it. And they shoot in. And I grab high up on the neck, pull him down. The reason is because if I come wide to reach and grab his neck like so many people do, very easy for him to see it. Even if his hand's here, very easy for him to just stop. But I can't get to his neck. He's actually inside. The whole point of this clinch is I'm inside. So once again, it's like I'm praying. My hands are here. They could be covering my head. Open his arms up and come in, grab him, and pull him down. Okay, option number two. His hands are up again. This time they're, they're tight together. He knows what I'm doing. I see I can't get in. It's going to be very hard. I'm going to smack his hands down and reach in and grab right away. One more time slowly. I smack, smack, and I drive in. This could hit his stomach also. This will pull his head down so that I can grab him. I'll do that one more time very slowly. One, two. See this drives his stomach down and his head comes into me. Now I can come into my clinch position. If you notice, I'm, I'm bridging the gap of the range. I don't want to be here and try and reach from here. He could just jab at me or give me away or kick me or whatever. Yeah. But if I come in, I take away his weapon, I lower his body. Now, now my body moves into the range to get close and clinch him. Okay. From here, he's not going to be able to knock me out. Option number three. Uh, he's gonna throw a straight punch. We'll look at it from a straight punch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna parry the punch, but I'm gonna loop. Okay, so the basic parry loop. So all I'm doing is this. As I do that, I'm gonna come inside again, hit the stomach, pull him down, grab the neck. Sorry. So here, the loop. My hand, my looping hand is low. This hand is up, protecting my head. Hit the stomach, pulls him down. Here, we'll do it from the other side, this one, so you can see. So here, this is protecting against that punch. So throw that punch, it's still up in case he throws it. So as that comes, this hand just drops right into the solar plexus stomach area, and then come and I get my clinch. Option number three, uh, number four, will be a hook. Okay, now we've looked at haymakers before. We're gonna deal with the haymaker the exact same way we normally would. So uh, we'll do it right here. So, yeah. I'm just going to lift my elbow and protect, but I'm going to drive in at the same time. 
See my position now? I'm much closer. From here, I'm gonna once again reach and pull him down. Here, reach, pull him down. I'm already inside. Now, if this hand is up and, and he's keeping it really tight and he throws that hook, I'm not gonna be able to come in. What I'm gonna do is as I come in, I'm gonna pull it down. I'm gonna clear the hand. And that's something I remember for any of these positions. If ever you're here and this hand is here, you don't wanna not acknowledge it. This hand is a weapon. He can throw an elbow with it. And he can punch you with it, anything he wants. So as I see this and I come in, and this is here, pull it. Get it out the way. Now I'm in my clinch position. Same thing for the straight punch. If that other hand is up tight, I pull it down before. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a couple things we can do from the clinch. These are ways to finish a fight very quick. So I have him here. The attacks from here are very brutal. The first one we'll look at is a headbutt. I'm gonna throw his head up, bam, pull him back down. Now look, I pull him to the side of my body. Okay, so I can yank him from here, up, headbutt, drop him down, drop him down, headbutt. Same thing on the side. I have him here, I throw him up. I keep my arms as tight as possible so that there's no space. It's almost like I'm choking him here. Then I whack the back of his neck and I headbutt him. Okay, and I pull him back into my biceps or right back here so I can keep him down here again. This alone, boom, right in the bicep hurts. Okay, attack number two. Throw him up, catch him with one hand. This hand is ready for the elbow. Pull him back down, other side, throw him up. Elbow, pull him back down, throw him up. Elbow, pull him back down, throw him up. Boom, elbow. As you can see, I throw him away from me, so I create the distance so that when I pull him into my punch, my elbow, I'm whacking the back of his neck, and my elbow comes in, so it's both forces are coming at each other. Okay? Number three, very basic, is just knees. So here, I'm gonna throw my knee up, and look, when I throw the knee, I don't throw it like this. My hip comes up and into it, okay? Especially with jeans on, or in a street situation, you're not wearing shorts, you're not gonna be able to sometimes lift your knee very high. Like these are tight on me. So what I wanna do is I wanna drive my hip so that I can lift him. I can pull him right into it, right here, okay? So we have boom, headbutt, boom, shoulder hit, or bicep hit, boom, elbow, Pull him down, knee, knee. Now once you've done this to the guy, it's gonna be really easy to finish him. I'll show one submission from here today. It's uh, a neck crank, it's kind of mean, but it's an extremely painful, fast way to finish a fight. So I have him here, I'm gonna turn his head. Now look, instead of coming under the neck like a guillotine, I'm gonna come across his jaw. I'm gonna turn his jaw and figure four my hands on the other side. This hand's on his shoulder and just squeeze. Other side, do you feel the pressure on your neck? I do. What I'm doing is I'm turning the neck sideways and compressing it down. So it's putting pressure on the vertebrae in the neck and it's choking at the same time. It's different than a regular choke, but a good neck crank will cause you to stop breathing as well. So from here I pop him up, elbow him, pull him down. I create this space. Look, I'm gonna open up the space for him to go. So if I just tried to neck crank him from here, it could be a little hard. My own body's blocking me. But if I open up sideways for that second, then I go. I created the space for him to go in that direction. Okay, so I'll get on this side here, here. Now look, he's facing the camera. Now what I want to do is use my body to drive his head toward his chest. So once his neck is sideways, I plant it. I figure for my arms. Sorry. I get control of his shoulder here and I just crank in. And I would basically what I'm doing is putting pressure downward on his shoulder, upward on his neck, and driving my body in. You feel like a compression around your neck. So that's it, that's everything for today. There's a lot more moves from the clinch, and the clinch actually leads into a lot of other positions, which are ones that we can do a lot more damage from as well. So all these positions flow, and that's what Dumog is. The whole point is that when he throws a punch, I don't want to be out here trading I want to get to positions where I can damage him and be elbowing him using my head and using very tight space so he can't react. And it's very effective because 99% of people are comfortable trying to punch you from here. 
very, very few people, when they start a fight with you and then you go, boom, and you're right here, know how to react to it. They don't know how to fight from there. It's a whole different scenario. Freaks them out. Okay, thank you very much.